briefly what we said was a very eye-opening Vilna Goyen that the Nasa Venishma that we will do and we will hear special potential for ultimate hearing and doing is something that came to us from Yishmael and from Esau. Okay, the Vilna Goyen says that this Nasa Venishma we said that we will do and we will hear this came to us from Esau and Yishmael. We said that that's reflected in their names. Yishmael is from the, the, the root of the word, of the name Yishmael is to hear, and it's related to the, the fact that we find that Yishmael was born through Hashem's listening to Hogarth's Tefillahs, and Esau is Osri, the, the root of the name Esau is, he's the accomplished, you know, fully done, accomplished person. I say that when he was born, he was born, you know, not like a baby, like uh, hairy, you know, uh, also, like completely formed, you know. So Esau is the, uh, Esau is the, um, is the one who has it all in terms of, uh, uh, and who's very firmly entrenched and firmly ensconced in Eilam here in this world, complete in, in things of this world. He's an Osri. So we, so we began to go ahead and explain on a very basic level, what is the Nasa Venishma, that Torah, which is, uh, that was their acceptance of Torah. Okay, their preparation to go ahead and receive the Torah was the Nasa Venishma, that, that we will do and we will hear. And that Hashem's purpose in giving Torah to Bnei Yisrael is, is to go ahead and bring Torah this spiritual entity of Torah, as we've discussed many times, the Torah is not just a handbook, it's not with instructions, it, it's a spiritual entity. And more than that, it's Istakal by Raisa Bar Alma, it is a spiritual entity from which all of creation derives. And that Hashem, in giving Torah, was bringing that spiritual entity into this world. Even though everything derives from Torah, but we say that the, the, the Bria, everything in creation, has a connection to Torah. And Torah was the blueprint for, for it. But that was only through a, what we call a hishtalshalos, a, um, a transformation from, from the ultimate spiritual state in HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself, through many transformations, through the four worlds, each, there, there are four main worlds, each one is... The closer to Hashem, the more spiritual, the closer to our world, the less. Through many transformations, until the final transformation of that spiritual resulted in the creation of a physical world. Sort of uh, uh, contractions and diminishments of the primal light, of the primal energy that comes from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which is that ultimate, the, the, the Atika, the, the ultimate spiritual state, which is in HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself which through various contractions, what we call tzimtzum, that's, I mean, that's a called tzimtzum, our, our contractions of this light. So this world was derived. But Torah, bringing Torah into this world, meant first, by giving Torah here in this world, meant reintroducing, it's a recreation, okay, it's reintroducing that blueprint without the hishtal shalos. It meant connecting everything in creation to the shayvish that it came from, to the root that it came from. Not via the hishtalshlus, the contraction, but that it should actually be connected to the shayvish itself. We find that the Medrash says that all of creation was silent when Hashem went ahead and gave the Torah. There's total silence in creation. The total silence in creation is, that's the... Uh, the precondition for accepting Torah and connecting Torah to the connecting to the Shairish of the Torah, which is sort of a recreation for the Bria. In other words, the initial Bria that, I, that Hashem went ahead and created was, we say, mitli toli v'koi, was existed on a condition, had uh, conditions attached. Okay, yoim hashishi. It existed till till the shishi, the sixth day of Sivan. You know, they say, yoyim ha shishi. Whenever you say, yoyim ha shishi. Ha shishi is not the sixth day. Ha shishi is the sixth day of Sivan. Okay, yoyim ha shishi is an allusion to the sixth day of Sivan. That all of the world, uh, uh, that ultimately the existence of the world dependent on the receiving of the Torah. 
that receipt of the Torah is the attachment of everything that there is in creation to its shayrish, its untranslated shayrish. So to the point that it becomes completely negated, all of the Bria is a certain sense that its physical aspect, which which is a consequence of a hishtalshalus, of a diminishment of the air, completely, com- completely negated and completely transformed by its attachment to the shayrish, to the root that it came from, to the extent that the Bria becomes... The Bria becomes, creation becomes an entity that's ein oit novadai. The Bria then, with that kind of attachment of the Bria, of, of creation, to Torah, where it's connected to, to its very roots before they're diminished, the Ayur the HaTayra is completely botail, it's completely subordinated to Torah, so that Taira defines it completely. So that the, the, the Torah defines the physical creation completely, not just derived from a hishtal shalos, okay, but it defines it completely to, to the degree that ain't oit novade, that your, the perception of the Bria, then our, that what happens is that our total perception of the Bria is a perception of Hashem. It's such an overtaking that the Bria becomes overtaken by Torah and completely defined by Torah by being attached to Torah as in the Devar Hashem, the word of Hashem as it is. Okay, because that's what the receiving of the Torah here is the receiving of the raw Dvar Hashem. The raw, untranslated Dvar Hashem. That in, if the ultimate Kabbalah's HaTorah had taken place, it would have completely defined what the Bria is, the way creation is. That we would perceive the creation as Enoid Movadi. So the Raga Chava Goyen. So they said about him that when he looked at things in nature, he saw a tree, he saw Trumas, Meisras, Mitzras, his whole relationship with it, it was on a different plane. He, he saw th- things only through the lens of Torah. Okay. That's a, a, a sort of a, a closest example that I can... That he saw things only through the lens of Torah. Okay. So that would be the ultimate Kabbalah Satayr. And that's what we were talked about a little bit about the Luchais. The first Luchais were Maisa Elikim. Maisa is Oilam Hamasa, our world. Maisa, but Maisa Elikim. In other words, a, it, it was a kind of a, a, physical, a physical entity, the Luchos, but that was completely defined by the words, and completely defined and overtaken, not like ink you write on a paper. It was completely defined and overtaken by the word of Hashem that, that penetrated it through and through. So we said the luchos themselves were maisei alikim. What the luchos represented, there was the giving of Torah. The giving of Torah is uh, the reception of such a koyach, of the Dvar Hashem down here in this world, because the Dvar Hashem didn't exist here in this world. And the further step, Moshe Rabbeinu going up to, to Hashem for 40 days and 40 nights, and then bringing down the luchos is a second step in Kabbalah Satayra. That, that's the Kabbalah Satayra, where once a Torah is comes down here, this entity with, the, with, the, with all the pyrotechnics, with the, with the koilois who rock him, and they're being able to go ahead and see the koilois even. So that's receiving the Dvar Hashem here. They, say, they saw the Oisiers, they even saw the, the, the writing. So that's, that, that was the receipt, bringing down here the Dvar Hashem in its raw state, the word of Hashem here in its raw state, here in this world. The second step was to take that and apply it and attach it to everything here in this world. The luchos, the word of Hashem, being written on those luchos, which were themselves Maisei Elokim, were symbolic of the relationship that Tyra was meant to go ahead and accomplish being down here in this world, to become so attached to everything here in this world, deriving from Tyra, to be so attached to the root of where it came from in Tyra, that it's completely overtaken that it becomes all Maisei Lekim, and that the whole perception of the Bria, of our, our entire perception of creation, is a perception of Hashem, Einoid Novadeh, that there's nothing, I look at anything in the Bria, and all I see is Bayre. Now all I see is the, all I see is the Creator. <coughs> so the Luchos, 
were symbolic of that. The first luchas were symbolic of that. The second luchas, there isn't that attachment of Torah. There are luchas that Moshe Rabbeinu himself carved out. There isn't that attachment of the dvar Hashem, of the raw word, word of Hashem to, to the physical over here. Okay, that's, in the second luchas, there's a different relationship. In Kabbalah's HaTorah, we have a synthesis, a coming together of two things. Wherever there's a Kabbalah's HaTorah, there's the Koyach of Tefillah and Torah that have come together. Every Tefillah, when we dive into Hashem for our needs, the ultimate Tefillah is not what's down here, Hashem, give it to me. Okay. Not what exists here in this world, I need that, that this, this, that, and the other thing, give it to me. Tefillah is, when I, I'm an Oymet Lechnei Hashem, Tefillah is, Hashem, you're the source of everything, and what I need, I want you to give it to me. Every tefillah is really a realization that everything that I need can only come to me from Hashem. So when I daven for something, I'm davening that I want it from Hashem. When Yitzchak Avinu gave Yaakov Avinu the brachas, he says, V'yitain l'cha eloi kim mital ha-shamayim. Hashem should go ahead and give you mital ha-shamayim. When he gives Esav the bracha, he says, You should have it from the earth. The earth should go ahead and give it to you. The, the, uh, you, the earth should give you what you need. Not that Hashem should go ahead and give it to you. And through tefillah, we, we achieve that understanding that everything that we want, that we need, comes from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and we want it from HaKadosh Baruch Hu.